Well, for this week, I was struggling to think of something I wanted to talk about until I was at a local card show. At this card show, I saw a bunch of old Pirates cards and even bought a few autographs. But as I was digging through a bin, something caught my eye. It was a Gregory Polanco card. Yes, Gregory Polanco. In my opinion, one of, if not the most infamous Pirates prospects in history. Not for anything good or anything bad. He was just what you could call the definition of getting a bunch of hype and, well, just being average and then proceeded to become below average. Polanco isn't even in the MLB anymore. He is currently playing in Japan. So how did he get there? Let's take a look at the rapid rise and rapid fall of Gregory Polanco. Funny story here. When Gregory Polanco was called up, I was so hyped for it that I actually attended the game in which he debuted against the Cubs in 2014. Polanco was called up due to Neil Walker being put on the newly named injured list, clearing a path for Polanco to make the major leagues. At the time, the Pirates already had two homegrown talents in Andrew McCutcheon and Starling Marte manning the outfield, so Polanco was the piece the outfield was missing. Polanco going into the 2014 season was ranked the 10th best prospect in the Baseball America rankings and the 12th best on MLB.com's, so the hype was there. Polanco was even named by Bleacher Report as baseball's next five-tool phenom. At this point of my younger life, I thought he was going to be the Pirates version of Mike Trout with what the media was saying about him. Let's start with his numbers after his call-up in 2014. During the rest of the season after his MLB debut, Gregory Polanco was solid. He batted 235 with 7 home runs and 33 RBIs. Solid numbers for a rookie. He played 89 total games in the big leagues in 2014, and fans were able to see some positive things for the future, especially since this was during the Pirates' short playoff window from 2013 to 2015. Speaking about 2015, let's talk about it. In 2015, Polanco saw his first full year of MLB action. He played in 153 games and had 593 total at-bats in this season. He had a solid 256 with 9 home runs and 52 RBIs. During this season, Polanco did not really see much growth in his home run totals, his power being a selling point of his play style, so this personally worried me back then. Heck, I even remember when I was younger checking every day to see if he hit a home run or not in that day's game. What also worried me about Polanco was his speed. Being a 5 tool level prospect, he had a very fast sprint speed when he left the box. However, in this 2015 season, he had 27 stolen bases. That might seem solid, which it was, but that was the highest number he would ever reach for a season high in the bigs. Let me also add, 2015 was the year in which we saw his fielding start to struggle. Polanco's fielding play, which can be really remembered by one play, that being in which he slipped in the outfield, allowing the Cubs to win in extras. A play that still lives in Pirates fans' minds to this day. Two thousand and sixteen through two thousand and eighteen, in my opinion, was when we saw the prime of Gregory Polanco's career. Let's start with what I think is his best career season in the MLB. In this year, twenty sixteen, Polanco hit a solid two fifty eight with twenty two home runs and eighty six RBIs. The 86 RBIs would be his career MLB best as he would never get above that total again. The only issue that Pirates fans began to notice in this season were his strikeout numbers, which would become an issue during his career. In 2016, he struck out a total of 119 times. In 2017, Polanco hit for an average of 251. He also saw his power numbers dip a lot going down to 11 home runs and 33 RBIs. Polanco did see an injury in this season which would also become a problem in his career. And now 2018, probably what I would say was the final year of Gregory Polanco's prime, in my honest opinion. In this season, Polanco hit 254 with 23 home runs and 81 RBIs, so he saw a very similar season to the year he had in 2016. This was very important for Polanco as he was coming off a shortened season in 2017. This was also important from the perspectives of Pirates fans. From my point of view, I saw that Polanco was capable of bouncing back from a ruined 2017 season. So many thought it was all up from here. This is where I think we were sadly wrong. I guess you could say when we hit 2019, we start to see the decline in Polanco. In 2019, we saw Polanco begin the season on the injured list. He would come back later in the season during May to return to regular season playing time. Two games in 2019, he hit 242 with six home runs and 17 RBIs. 
In these 42 games, he had 166 at-bats and struck out 49 times. So the strikeout issue started to return here. You might ask, why only 42 games? Well, the Pirates put him back on the injured list due to shoulder discomfort. During his rehab stint in the minor leagues, he ultimately was shut down for the rest of the season. So 2019, you could say, was the start of this downfall. And speaking of shortened seasons, this brought us to the infamous year of 2020. And well, we all know what 2020 was like. The entire MLB was put at a halt, so this allowed players coming off of injury to prepare even more. I even recall seeing clips of Polanco training in the offseason, saying to myself and telling my friends, yep, Polanco looks huge. He is about to go crazy. And then the 2020 season began. Polanco played in 50 of the 60 games in the shortened season and hit well what you could say was a career worse. 153. He hit seven home runs and 22 RBIs during the COVID season. Polanco's strikeout issue became even worse as well. He had more strikeouts than games played in 2020. He had a total of 65 strikeouts in 50 games. This was not a number Pirates fans wanted to see, especially since this season was coming off a year where Polanco saw a season cut short due to an injury. This season definitely was the worst of Gregory Polanco's career, which ended up leading us to his final season in the MLB, 2021. 2021 would be the last year Pirates fans would see Polanco wear the black and gold. In 2021, fans knew going into it that if changes were to be made by the new front office and management of the Pirates, Polanco could be on the chopping block. The problem with this is if they wanted to move Polanco, it was going to be hard to find a trade partner. In 2021, Polanco played in 107 games with the Pirates. He also hit for 11 home runs and 36 RBIs, and the strikeout numbers were not helping him. In those 107 games, he struck out a total of 104 times. This one could say was not good especially with the amount of strikeouts he had in 2020. During the end of August that season, the Pirates made the decision to release Gregory Polanco, thus ending his Pirates career. However, a few weeks later, Polanco would get picked up by the Toronto Blue Jays. Polanco stayed in AAA with the Buffalo Bisons during this time, and with the Bisons, he hit 374 with 9 home runs and 24 RBIs. He did this in 24 games with the Bisons. However, Polanco was never called up by the Blue Jays, thus ending his MLB career for now. In his entire MLB career, Polanco hit 241 with 96 home runs and 362 RBIs. Let me just say though that this is not the end of Gregory Polanco's career. He has seemed to find a great resurgence in Japan as of late. In 2022, Polanco signed a contract with the Yermi Giants in the NPB. In these games, Polanco saw a 240 batting average with 24 home runs and 58 RBIs. I even remember seeing highlights of him hitting absolute bombs in the NPV, and just looking at him and the reactions he was getting from the fans in Japan, you could tell that he was having fun playing baseball. In 2023, Polanco made a switch of teams and began to play for the Marines in the NPB. In this season, he hit 242 with 26 home runs and 75 RBIs. So in his two seasons so far in Japan, Polanco has seen better fortunes in his play. In these two seasons, he has hit a combined 241 with 50 home runs and 133 RBIs. The NPB has definitely been treating him well, and as a fan of Polanco's, it has been awesome to see him playing good baseball currently overseas. Well, after all of that rambling and stat reading, I want to give my honest opinion on Polanco. As a Pirates fan, I was so excited to see him come up to the big leagues and for him to be a part of those 2014 and 2015 playoff teams. Watching that outfield of Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon, and Polanco is something special. Hearing Greg Brown scream for Al Cafe! Every time Polanco did something awesome would give me chills as a diehard Pirates fan. Even during his decline, there were some fun moments to watch. Polanco was a major part of my time growing up with Pirates baseball. It did suck to see the rapid fall of Polanco, but those years of his prime were definitely special. Honestly, I would love to see Polanco try to make a comeback in the MLB, especially with how he's doing currently in the MPB. We have seen players in the past go to Japan after struggling in the MLB and then come back to the States to play again. It definitely would be awesome to see if Polanco would do this, but for now, it is cool to see the videos of him hitting absolute bombs in the NPV and all the fans going crazy. As always, thank you for watching this video and make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content.